Welcome to the Noy Group Insights interview. I'm Anthony Michaels. Today, I'm joined by Tim Husnick, the Senior Treasury Director for Foreign Exchange Risk Management at Medtronic. Thanks for being here, Tim. Yeah, thanks for having me. Today, I want to talk briefly about cryptocurrency and how you, as an FX expert and risk manager, are viewing this evolving world that's got so many different branches and components. How do you view what your role might be in, in helping prepare Medtronic for whatever comes next? Great question. I think there's two ways to think about cryptocurrency. Number one, as an asset class, but I think the more fascinating way to look at it as a currency, not a currency investment, but as a currency replacement. So like in the case of El Salvador, which has adopted Bitcoin as legal tender, and several other countries have it on their sort of government ballot or government discussion, like Ecuador, I believe, is also considering like adopting Ethereum as, as a currency. It's like, what if our customers start demanding to pay for products, so pay for trade goods in a digital currency, either as you know, central bank digital currencies, which I know lots of countries are working on, but also as like a cryptocurrency. So that's where I think there will be an intersection with treasury at some point in the future. And it'll, it's, it's a fascinating world to start thinking about, like having a corporate digital wallet, having a risk management strategy. How do you clear the risk? Most corporates want to clear the risk as soon as possible because some of these currencies move 10, 15 percent in one day. So that's commonly happening in the last month is cryptocurrencies moving 10, 15 percent in one day. So that's just an extreme amount of risk that, you know, it's hard for companies to tolerate the dollar value of all of these cryptocurrencies as they move so much. So I'm super fascinated and looking to explore more on, you know, the intersection between treasury and kind of the, the trade the trade payment space here. And as someone who spends a lot of time thinking about hedging, is there an easy answer to the question of how would you hedge cryptocurrency risk? I've often thought about that. I spent more time thinking about that than I care to admit because it's such a challenge. And, you know, I'm kind of the person though that's uh, inspired by a challenge. And, you know, I think attending a lot of these trade conferences that are happening are super important. Being part of peer groups are super important. Like, it's sort of like, I, it's one of those spaces, like maybe the first time ever, I don't want to be the first person to figure out a solution in that market. I, I kind of like, well, what has worked for you guys over in there in the different sector, you know? And it's really important to stay connected to, to your industry peers, more so than the banks, because right now a lot of banks can't provide a customer a cryptocurrency transaction. So, you know, you're kind of going into a different new pool of vendors too in the fintech space. And a lot of these vendors haven't really been vetted before by a treasury group or a multinational org. So I think I'm kind of excited that new relationships need to be formed. And it's not like just an FX kind of risk management currency problem. It's really about cash management problem. It's a FX kind of risk management problem. You know, it kind of crosses a lot of the sectors of treasury. So it's also a very cross-functional, complex project to figure out once once we do get there. And, and hopefully we have a little bit of time, but I do feel like customers wanting to pay in these currencies is going to happen maybe sooner than, than people think. And how important, is my last question, is the regulatory aspect of this in terms of how you approach it and how corporations approach it? What's so fascinating about cryptocurrency and blockchain technology is that they're all decentralized and unregulated. <laughs> like you can't even regulate them. I mean, these transactions happen on the blockchain. The blockchain's rules are what regulate the blockchain. And there's several blockchains right now that are trying to like fight for market share. So like there's your Bitcoin blockchain. That's really just a, a simple cryptocurrency and you can't really do anything else with Bitcoin blockchain. But then you move to Ethereum and you can do these service contracts and, and it becomes a little bit more interesting. And then there's like emerging thought-based blockchains like, like Cardano and Solana. And it's like every single one has different sets of rules and the rules are what regulate the blockchain. So it's sort of like, how do you regulate a blockchain where the blockchain itself is a set of rules that regulate it? You can't really regulate it from a country perspective. So that's what makes it so fascinating. Like how does a country regulate it when it 
in and of itself cannot be regulated except by the rules that it itself has created. If you just think about what I just said, it's <laughs> it's almost like such a chaotic and crazy concept that it's just so fascinating to me and it's super challenging and I guess I just look forward to trying to solve it.